So, uh, in general when you talk about lithography then it is a image of the mask is projected onto a photo edges coated with wafer surface and designing of optical photolithography system includes following uh, two things one is that design operation of the exposure tool to project the image on the photo mask uh, and second is optimization of the chemical process that occurs on the photo resist when it is exposed. So, light source can may be either visible UV, deep UV or extreme UV uh, depending on the uh, images that you want uh, then or patterning that you are uh, designing for. There are three primary measures of performance for a lithography system. The first one is a resolution, there is a minimum feature size that can be exposed and resolution generally depends on the stability of the photo edges to be reconstructed uh, from the real or the aerial image. Second one uh, which is another performance of uh, parameter for the lithography system is the sensitivity of photo edges material and finally and most important is the alignment system and that is precise alignment of wafer with the mask is very important. Uh, if you want to decrease this uh, feature size uh, you have to go to from uh, few hundred microns to few tens of microns and further down then source with shorter wavelength can be used that means the shorter the wavelength uh, the features can be reduced further. Traditionally we use mercury vapor lamps uh, now we are using UV exposure lamps uh, some people are also going for uh, e beam lithography uh, not some people actually a lot of uh, e beam lithography processes are, are there. Uh, for uh, for obtaining or for patterning a feature size which is extremely small in terms of few nanometer and some of the uh, uh, wavelengths that are considered as standard are G, I, G line and I line uh, consist of 436 nanometer and 365 nanometer uh, respectively where KRF XML laser is generally 248 nanometer it is used for 250, 180 and 130 while ARF uh, uh, XMR laser is for 193 nanometer and generally used for 130 and 90 nanometer processes. Now, uh, there are three different kinds of uh, exposure system the first one is contact printing second one is proximity printing and third one is the projection printing ok. So, exposure in, in the in the contact printing the mask is in contact with the photo edges there is a hard contact. In the proximity the mask is at proximity with respect to the uh, wafer it is not touching the wafer uh, there is there is a bit of gap between a mask and the wafer. And finally, projection printing as you can see that the image is projected through via a lens onto the wafer. So, uh, in contact printing the mask is placed chrome side down in direct contact with the photo register. Uh, uh, it is easy to understand while in contact printing the systems are capable of high resolution printing because mask is in contact with the wafer minimizing the effect of diffraction. You see when it is uh, uh, in, in touch with the with the substrate there will be minimum diffraction. Uh, however, these systems are not efficient for printing very small features and also cannot be used for high value manufacturing. The hard contact between mask and resist on the wafer may damage or contaminate the mask. So, uh, if you talk about proximity printing, in proximity printing uh, largely solves the problem of contamination because there is no physical contact of the mask with the photo edges or with the wafer and uh, generally mask and wafer are kept as a separation of 5 to 25 microns. Because of the separation of wafer and mask the resolution may be degraded. However, practically minimum feature size you can obtain of order of 20 microns and that is why proximity printing is preferred right uh, by, by, by approximating or by, by achieving the proximity exposure. So, in the first case what we thought that the, the mask is there and you hold the mask on the wafer is a physical contact proximity there is a gap and projection of course, there is a projection like a like if you see the movie hall there is a projector which projects the image. So, if you see the uh, slide uh, practically minimum feature size in order of 20 microns can be achieved by proximity exposure system then the resolution of the systems improves as the exposure wavelength decreases we already talked about that. So, people also go for x-ray lithography where the wavelength is only of 1 to 2 nanometer uh, finally, both contact and proximity printing requires 1 x mask. So, we do not have to really reduce the mask uh, features because whatever features are in the mask will come on the wafer uh, and are difficult for producing reduction systems. However, if you go for the uh, third one which is a proximity uh, projection printing in this case the system uh, provide high resolution, but without contaminating the mask. 
In the exposure tools, the mask is physically separated from the wafer and an optical system is used to project the image which you can see here. Uh, this solves the contamination issue because there is no physical contact. Also, the resolution of projector printer is generally limited by diffraction effects uh, and that is why the optica, optics is very important and generally the optical system is about uh, it reduces the image by 4 x or 5 x. Sometimes in some cases it also reduces the image by 10 x uh, which means that only a small portion of the wafer is printed during each exposure. Typically in this case the steppers are used to expose the whole wafer, steppers means stepper motors. So, let us play two different uh, videos that will help you out to understand the uh, this lithography further and if we play the first video. Hello, my name is Bernhard from the ZUS Microtech development team. Today I would like to present our new generation of production aligner, the MA200 Compact, which offers an advanced technology design, unmatched precision and a high degree of flexibility. See for yourself how easy it is to operate. The chuck is stored in the bottom part of the aligner and is quick and easy to load. Equally easy to insert are the mask holder and the mask. Now I load the carrier. That's all there is to it and the MA200 compact is ready for operation. The processes of the MA200 compact can be controlled via touch screen. For some processes, you can select between fully automatic and manual operation. A robot scans the wafers and determines their quantity, position and size. And the processing begins. The MA200 Compact processes wafers and substrates up to 200 millimeters regardless of their material, size, shape and thickness. The machine runs and adjusts fully automatically and is optimized for the processing of thick resists such as with thick resist flip chip bumping, wafer level packaging, MEMS, nanotechnology or telecommunication devices. The big advantage over steppers is the exposure of the entire wafer in one step. Thus, a throughput of more than 100 wafers per hour can be achieved with an overlay accuracy in the sub-micron range. Now, let's slow the process down and take a closer look. First, the wafer is pre-adjusted onto the pre-aligner in preparation for the ensuing alignment. A linear transport system loads the wafer onto the exposure chuck which, together with the robot arm, guarantees the optimal and flexible handling of the substrate. No other mask aligner on the market offers a higher degree of alignment accuracy than the MA200 Compact. With the use of the recently developed and patent pending direct align option from SUS, the mask is aligned directly to the wafer, guaranteeing an overlay accuracy of up to 0.5 microns at 3 sigma. The structures of the photo mask are conveyed via shadow cast. The patented wafer leveling system from SUS compensates for topographic variations and wedge errors, thus guaranteeing perfect alignment and exposure results. And the entire process is easy to monitor here on the touch screen. Because of the MA200 Compact's newly designed microscope, during exposure the mirror housing doesn't move forward. The microscopes only move sideways, thus reducing the vibrations of the alignment stage to a minimum, resulting in far greater accuracy. The optics of the MA200 Compact are optimized for thick resist processing. In thin resists, it achieves a resolution of 3 microns in proximity mode and a sub-micron resolution in contacts printing. A microscope for bottom side alignment 
is optionally available. It can process substrates with thicknesses of up to four millimeters. The MA200 Compact is a master when it comes to detail. Our idea while designing it was to create a device that is both user and maintenance friendly in order to further reduce your operational costs. The electronics and all important components are easily accessible as well as being arranged in a clear and logical manner. Because of its compact size, it also saves valuable space in the clean room. The MA200 Compact is the ideal exposure system for application areas with high demands in terms of package densities and micro-mechanical structures. I can only recommend that you take a closer look at our new mask aligner in person and would like to invite you to do so today. The MA200 Compact from SUS Microtech. Let me play the second video as well. This is the MA6. It's used to expose uh, UV light to your substrate that has uh, either photoresist on it. So before we run the machine, the first thing we got to do is make sure the light bulb is turned on or even not blown up. So we come out to the back and you can see the lights turned on by the reflection here or you can see the light glowing. So you know that the light bulb is on. But in addition to that, you want to find out how many hours are left on the light bulb. So you check the power supply. So you hold this button called DS. And it says 3226. That's how many hours the bulb has been used. So the bulb has a lifespan of 4,000 hours. So when it's over 3,500, we would notify staff and tell them to change it. So we're pretty close to that. Now that the bulb is uh, okay to use, and there's nothing wrong with the bulb and the power supply, we want to uh, log into the system. So before we log in, we check the logbook. And the logbook would say that the last person who used it was Monica on uh, 221. And then you would check what notes she had or anything was wrong. So you can see there's nothing wrong. So we're, we're ready to turn the machine on and log in. So the login computer is here. You have to log in to use the machine, otherwise it won't turn on. And the login has uh, several functions. The first, the screen is the login, where you type in username and password. You can schedule uh, to use a machine at different hours. Also, you, can, you should check this to make sure nobody else is using it. So today is the 24th, and it's 10 a.m., and there's nobody using it, so we're free to use it. Also, there's a history tab where we can see the last uh, user. And you can see that Monica was the last user and she was the last one to write in the logbook. So once we know the machine's uh, ready and it's okay to use, we just log in. So once you've logged in, the machine will be able to power up. And what we do now is we turn the on switch on here. So we just turn it to the on switch. And you can see the machine starting up. And it's important to read the screen. It tells you a lot of information. So it says, ready for start, press load button. So the load button's right here. So we press that. And now it says, watch out, machine is starting up. You know that the machine is ready for load and start it up when it, the information says, ready for load. So before we run the machine, the one uh, thing we can do is change the parameters. So you hit this button called edit parameter. And now you can, you can adjust the parameters such as time and gap distance and type of exposure. So how do we uh, edit the parameters or change the different parameters? We can use the X uh, left and right. So we move this way, you can change the gap, change the type of contact, and then change the exposure type. So let's change the exposure time first. So it's at five seconds now. We can change it to 25 seconds. If you hold fast and up, you can change it faster. So it's a 25. Let's make it 26. Now we want to go slower. 
so we don't hit fast. We just. So now we've adjusted the exposure time. Let's change the alignment gap. Let's make that 40. And then let's change the type of, we'll make it a soft contact. And now new parameters have changed. There's different types of uh, exposure types from soft, vacuum, hard. Uh, you can look at the supplemental to get more information. But right now we'll set it as soft. So once your parameters are set, we can hit edit parameter. What we're gonna do now is load the mask. So how do we load the mask? We put a we press the button called change mask on the screen. So when you hit change mask, you're ready to load the mask. So we put it in here. So you load your mask in here by lift, lifting this uh, clip here and putting it in. And when it's in nice, you hit this button called enter, and you can toggle the vacuum. So right now the vacuum is off. When you press enter, now the vacuum is on. And when you come back, you can see that it's uh, it's vacuumed in and it's stuck pretty well. So now we're going to put this in here. So we carefully carry it. And we'll place it all the way in. And when it's in, we press change a mask. And that's how you load your mask. We're going to be doing a backside alignment now. So what this does is it aligns features on the back of your wafer to your mask. And how you do it is with a microscope from the bottom. So the first thing we do is uh, we have to have a mask loaded. And then we turn the screen on. And we make sure this thing says backside alignment microscope is on. So it's on. But also we need to change this to backside alignment. So it can be either a topside alignment or it can be a backside alignment. So this is an illumination. So now the light is coming from the backside. So if you look in here, you can see the light hitting the features. So that's the microscope from here coming, looking up and light hitting it. So we can look for those on the screen now. And uh, pretty much what you do is uh, this controls the microscopes on the back. So you can select one at a time and move around till you find your features. It looks like uh, we found our alignment marks on the mask. So we need to adjust the focus. So you use this top straight uh, left and right. So the left one adjusts the left. And the right one will adjust the right focus. You can also adjust the intensity. Also adjust the position. So if I want to move this one up and down, I would hit right, and then I would move it up and down. If I want to hit move the left one, it's a similar thing. So when you find your mask and you think you're ready to do exp uh, exposure and align it, you would grab this image. So you press uh, grab image button right here. And when you press that, what it does, it, it takes a picture of the mask. And now we're ready to load the wafer. We press this button where it says load wafer. So it says pull slide and substrate onto chuck. And we would just load our wafer on. in, you press enter, and it'll bring it up. So now you, you can see you're in contact. This is the image overlay from the mask. And these features right here, see they're, they're the bottom substrate of your wafer. So how do you move the wafer? We know that these buttons move the microscope. So how do we move the wafer? It's these buttons, right? It's these knobs right here. This is the Y, this, the X is on this side, and this is the tilt. So I'll give you an example. I can turn this, and you can see the background, these images moving. And then you can see this moving. So this is the Y position on the left side, and the right side is the X knob. 
and you can adjust the tilt with this too. And how you can adjust the focus, and you can adjust the intensity or light. So you would do that to find your alignment marks and then align them. So once you have aligned them, you're ready for exposure. And how do you expose? You press the first you alignment check, which will bring it up to touch. You want to make sure nothing moved. And then when it's in contact, you hit exposure. And then when you hit exposure, it's good to turn your back away from the light so it doesn't damage your eye. So hit exposure, and then we just turn away. So after exposure, you need to unload your wafer. So what would you do is um, you would come to the screen, and it will say, pull slide or unload exposed substrate. So you just pull it out, and then this is you press the enter button, and then the vacuum will be released. And you can take your wafer out. And then you would put it back in. So that's how you unload your wafer after exposure. What we're going to do now is top side alignment by using the microscope on the top to align to the wafer uh, that's underneath through the glass. So to do top side alignment, we need to remove the back side microscope. So we press this button. That turns it off. Also, we need to put the illumination to the top side. And then uh, we can load our wafer in. So again, you press load, and it says pull slide and load substrate onto chuck. And then you press enter when you did that. And the microscope will automatically come down because we have the BSA microscope light, uh, button off. So now it's down, we, we turn the TV screen on. And what, what this is doing is taking the Im, uh, putting the image from here onto the screen. So again, this, these buttons right here control the X and Y position of the microscope. So it looks like we found something here. So we can turn up, it's pretty, the power of uh, illumination is pretty high intensity. So we can lower the power and you can see that. So we gotta find the mask alignment mark on this side. So there's different functions on this. This knob right here. So if you move it, uh, this, will put, this will control the light microscope, the X position of the light microscope. And the left side has the same button. So when I move the left knob, I can turn this way. When I move the right knob, I can turn it this way. We can adjust the tilt to make these match up by turning this knob right here. So they look like it's uh, pretty matched up. So what would you do is uh, you would do the same thing as a, similar to backside alignment. You would align your alignment marks on your wafer to these right here. So you can see that if I move this, this always, these, these knobs always control the substrate. So when I move this, you can see that this has been moved. So you can tell that's the actual substrate moving, not the mask. So you try to focus it, and you try to find your alignment marks and align them to the features. And then once you have aligned it, you do the same thing, and you do an alignment check, and then I'll bring the mask up, and then you would expose it. So you press expose, and then you do exposure again. So then you turn away so the UV light doesn't hit your eyes. So after you're done with exposure, you would unload your wafer, so it tells you pull slide or unload substrate. So you pull it out, and then you take it out. Now you finish your sample. You put this back in. Now if you're done, you want to move this back up, and you don't want to bring it back down. 
this is where you press the BSA button. So by default, this will not come down. But also to bring this up, you press F1 and enter. And it will bring the microscope up. It's always good to leave it in this, this position with the microscope up and the, the BSA button on because that way the microscope doesn't come on and up every time you're using it. So after that, we're ready to uh, take out our mask. If we want to unload a mask, it's, we press the change mask. It's pretty similar to loading it. It's a reverse process. You would press change mask. You would take your substrate out. You would hit the enter button to remove the vacuum. And then you would take your weight mask out. You would press the change mask button again. And it would say confirm with enter that you know the mask is there. So now we're ready to turn the system off. So we want to make sure everything's in the standby position that you started the machine with. And then before you turn it off, you want to make sure you write in a logbook the different parameters. So the, the compressed air is about 4.9. The nitrogen is about 1.65. The vacuum is about 0.86 negative 0.86. We used a four inch wafer with silicon and we did 25 second exposure. Now we're ready to turn off. First, first thing we do is we turn off the switch here. And also the TV screen. And then we can log out here. And then some messages like, did you reset the X, Y to tilt position? And we did that. So we put OK. OK. So what you saw in the first video was the uh, uh, automated system, right? Which is generally used in industries. While the second video was more on the uh, the Carl Juice mask liner. There is a, a EVG 620 um, and different kind of mask liners are there. Uh, if time permits, we will show you to you how the mask liner in actual way how we can use it. It is on our laboratory. Uh, but if you want to, like I said, you want to achieve the feature, chi feature size which are less than 2 microns, uh, photolithography will not work and you have to go for an uh, uh, alternative which is your e-beam lithography where the wavelengths are even smaller and uh, uh, when you go for uh, x-ray also it will help you to achieve the better feature size. So, if you, if you see e-beam uh, lithography, if you see this particular slide, uh, then in this slide what you can see. Uh, that the uh, this is an e beam lithography uh, schematic if we start from the top uh, thing right the the, the or, uh, yeah so we let, let us start from the 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 bottom side this one so you can see there is a mechanical stage on which the elect, uh, the substrate is uh, loaded along with the uh, photoregist right this much is there now the electron beam will will scan this photoregist in a raster scanning mode mostly raster scanning mode uh, there are other modes also for scanning. So, if you see the top one is electron B gun from which the electrons are emitted and then there is an alignment coil, then there is a first condenser coil, finally there is a blanking plates to further uh, uh, send the ele electron beam through it, second electron uh, second condenser lens, uh, then there is a limiting apertures through which the electron beam will pass and finally there is a lens and coils that will help the electron beam to move or deflect and uh, the, then there is a pattern generator and of course everything is controlled by a computer. So, this is how the electron beam system looks like you do not have to worry about it you have to just know that there is a e beam lithography system available. In this particular uh, course we are not going to use e beam we are we are strictly uh, focusing on photolithography which is UV exposure based lithography. However, let us see the importance of the e beam lithography. So, the size limitation in optical lithography arises because of the resolution depends on the wavelength right. So, uh, 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 an electron beam has a much smaller wavelength. So, smaller the wavelength we can improve the resolution. So, that is why it can achieve the higher resolution. In e beam lithography a very narrow electron beam is used to scan and write the directly on the wafer. This is a direct writing method and you can see we already discussed the setup which is shown in the figure. Uh, this setup consists of electron beam sources, lens deflectors, coils to project the beam on the surface and the resolution uh, of 20 nanometer can be achieved. The disadvantage of this method is that uh, the wafer has to be individually right that means that it is extremely costly and the process is time consuming. Also e beam lithography is a scanning system 
system with conventional lithography is used as a one shot exposure system. In this case, it will scan then go to next stop, scan again go to next stop, again scan. So, it takes time, it is time consuming process. Lastly, this system requires vacuum of order of 10 raise to minus 6 torr, which is a very high vacuum. So, the process is slow and expensive and the backscattering of electron may affect the resolution. So, some of the disadvantages, uh, disadvantages are also there uh, associated with particular e-beam lithography, but at the, at the same point because the wavelength is small, the resolution can be better or the feature size can be smaller. Now, whatever you say you uh, if you if I talk about the uh, UV exposure you require a mask aligner and uh, we have both the mask aligner in, in our institute uh, which is Indians of Science Bangalore. Uh, we have EVG 620, we have MJB 4, these are two different mask aligner, it is semi automated mask aligner. So, generally mask aligner is used to align the wafer to the mask. Uh, we will we will discuss this thing and we will see as an example. Uh, uh, there are three degrees of freedom x, y and theta between mask and wafer. So, let us let us uh, uh, at least understand the process. So, I have this uh, let me just draw the uh, top view. I have the uh, wafer here and on that wafer I am loading a mask. Okay. Now, uh, there is some pattern on the mask that you can see. So, the, the mask is on the top and the wafer is in the bottom. Okay. and these are the alignment marks. Okay. Now, this is a pattern let us say you have this pattern in the mask. You need to make sure that the wafer is particular uh, is properly aligned. You here you see what you see that the wafer is tilted right wafer is tilted that means you have to rotate the mask in anti clockwise direction. So, there should be a rotation mechanism right. So, that rotation can be uh, we can rotate the mask by using the theta axis of the mask aligner. Suppose the alignment uh, is in terms of the uh, uh, that the, the, the alignment marks are too much on the left side like this and you have to align it. So, that you have to move the wafer in uh, mask in the right axis. So, either you can uh, uh, move the mask or you can move the wafer. So, here you have a freedom of moving at x axis, y axis and theta. I just took an example of a theta and x axis same thing there can be problem with a y axis then you can also uh, uh, move the mask in a y axis position or in a y axis direction. So, in the semi automated system the alignment is done manually, but in advanced automated system the automatic uh, pattern recognition is used in the alignment system. Uh, normally, alignment marks requires at least two sets of alignment as we have seen that on both the sides of the mask there were two uh, set of alignment. So, that we can see that the mask is properly aligned and then split field microscope is used. See what is the difference between normal microscope and split field microscope that in split field you can see both the, uh, uh, the entire uh, uh, mask and alignment marks on the mask simultaneously. Uh, while in the normal uh, microscope you can only see one side, then you have to go to other side then see this side that will cause lot of alignment issue, but in split field both the alignment marks you can see simultaneously. So, generally it is uh, associated with split field uh, you know uh, microscope or indicated with split, split field microscope. So, let us uh, uh, see some of the videos that are available, uh, so that it will help you out to understand how to uh, can you use the mask aligner. Let me play all the videos one by one.
This is not a matched mask and wafer, but we should at least be able to see the alignment process. satisfied with the alignment, so we'll expose. Now I'll unload the wafer and run the same wafer in topside alignment mode. Another five second exposure and unload it. Today is April 14th, 2013, and we are looking at Class 1 Equipment's MJB4 ID number 3. 3685, serial number 191. This machine is through the refurbishment process, ready to be locked down for shipping. But first we'll just demonstrate the operation by running a four inch wafer in hard contact. alignment check. It introduces nitrogen underneath the wafer. And now we can verify that we're still satisfied with our alignment. We are, so we press expose. And it asks it to double check that you want to expose. Demonstrate that. I'll go to parameters. Switch to IR. Load. And we're now reviewing the mask and wafer by transferring. 
transmissive light from underneath the wafer. Okay, when, when I play the video, what you were able to see? You were able to see uh, different mask alignment system, how it can be used, how it can be operated, right? And in the in the following modules, what we will look at, we will look at the uh, SU8 uh, as a photoresist. SU8 is very, very important in lot of application and we will then take an example of a patterning a metal electrode onto an oxidized silicon substrate right so this is the next uh, uh, module we will discuss this in this module just focus on the alignment system uh, different kind of mask photoresist uh, e beam lithography uh, uv lithography the the evg 620 mjb4 and other alignment system uh, uh, once you understand in detail about these systems uh, we will go to the next uh, module uh, in which I will I will cover two very important stuff. One is how to pattern a metal on a substrate, and second is the SU8 lithography. We'll also quickly see because you are learning lithography. I'll also want to uh, show it to you what is called soft lithography. Okay, so we'll th we'll cover these three items in the next module. Till then, you take care. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always ask us uh, through the forum. Uh, uh, Dr. Mahesh will reply to you uh, as well as uh, uh, the other. Uh, students uh, including me, uh, I will help you out to uh, answer your questions uh, with best of our abilities. Uh, till then you take care, I will see you next class.